Good Sunday, brothers and sisters. My name is Father Mauricio, and we are in this feast of the Carpus Christi. Before anything else, let us do a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We give you thanks, to Lord, for this Sunday, the day of the resurrection of your Son, for this time of the Eucharist, for this time of the solemnity of the Corpus Christi, in which you have given us your Son, in his body and blood, to have our true food, our true drink in our life. We ask that you may give us the, the faith to really believe that your Son, Jesus Christ, is in the Eucharist. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus replied to them, In all truth I tell you, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise that person on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in that person. As the living Father sent me, and I draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will also draw life from me. This is the bread which has come down from heaven. It is not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is what he taught at Capernaum in the synagogue. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. So in this Sunday, brothers and sisters, we have this uh, solemnity, this feast of the Corpus Christi. And this feast was instituted by Pope Urban IV. He instituted this feast uh, as a uh, let's say as a supplication, as a request from St. Thomas Aquinas because there were some heresies about the real presence of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the Eucharist. St. Thomas Aquinas was one of the first uh, fathers of the Church who started to develop this uh, understanding of what the real presence of God is, how this bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ, how this, uh, let's say, process, transformation happen. He's the one who starts to think about the transubstantiation, which is not a thing that we're going to talk about today. The most important thing, brothers and sisters, is to understand one thing. Why do we celebrate Corpus Christi? Corpus Christi is very important for all the Catholics, all the Christians. Why? Because it's very difficult to understand that in the Eucharist, with this bread and wine, with all the prayers that the priest does, how is it possible that this bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ? I don't know if you ever thought about it. We, all, we usually think about, yeah, the bread and wine are transformed in the body and blood of Christ spiritually. But what Jesus Christ is talking to us in the Gospel is not something spiritual. It's not something that we have to imagine. It's not something theological. It goes very deep in the essence of what we as human beings are. 
You know, when Jesus Christ instituted the Eucharist, he said, do this in memory of me. Every Sunday, when you celebrate the Eucharist, remember me. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory, in a memorial of how I passed from death to life. A memorial is not only a remembering of what happened that night, but it's also something that actualizes what happened in the past, now in the present. It's something very, let's say, profound. The Lord wanted to give us this uh, commandment to celebrate the Eucharist, so we always have this presence, actualization, event in which Christ is passing from death to life. And the presence of God is true. It's real in the Eucharist. But sometimes we don't believe this. Because to believe that Jesus Christ is present in his flesh and blood, in this piece of bread, in this cup of wine, is very difficult. To have faith in this comes from above, comes from God the Father. You know when the when the uh, the Jews were, were asking Jesus Christ, so what are the signs that you are doing so we may believe in you? Because you are saying that you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God, that you are going to send us the manna. The manna was very important for the people of Israel because they had lived forty years in the desert with this kind of food. Even the scientists today say that the manna was a kind of a, a segregation from some wasps that used to live in the desert. Some little insects that were flying all around the desert. So they, in the morning they used to uh, draw all these uh, kind of white thing that it was on the floor and it was a kind of food. It has protein. It has some nourishment for for the for a human being, you know. The scientists they don't even uh, fully really understand what was this manna, but it was true for the people of Israel. It was very true that God sent this food from heaven. It was something tangible. It was something material. Even they were saying that this manna, when you put it in your mouth, it could change into different flavors. If you want this manna to have the flavor of a chicken, so you have the flavor of chicken. If you want to have this, the flavor of a beef, you have the flavor of beef in your mouth. If you want the flavor of honey, you have the flavor of honey in your mouth. So this manna was, was a kind of a change in the taste according to, to your desires. So it was really a, a banquet from heaven. So it's not, it's not something like Manna was something coming from the clouds and the sea. No, it was really a food from heaven. The Lord has fed thousands and thousands of people in the desert with this kind of food. And for 40 years. So when the people of Israel saw this, Jesus Christ saying, I am the Messiah. So they were thinking, if you are the Messiah, send us the manna again. Send us this food. Because if you are from above, if you are from God, you should be able to give us again this money, this food that will satisfy us. That if we think it is a meal, we're going to treat it as a meal. If we think this money is bread, we're going to treat it as bread. If we think this manna is, I don't know, a vegetable, we're going to feel that it's a vegetable. So give us this food again so we will believe that you are sent by God. And Jesus Christ says something important. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the man who was sent to you in the desert. I am the miracle of that food coming down from heaven to feed you in the desert. I am this food that you are waiting for. 
But he didn't say it in a spiritual way, in a metaphorical way. We always think that Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life in a metaphorical way, no? He said, I am the bread. And moreover, he said, you have to eat me. You have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. You have to eat my hand. You have to eat my body. You have to eat my leg. You have to eat my flesh. You know, when uh, St. John was writing the gospel, his gospel, he didn't use the verb to eat. He used the verb tojo, which means to chew. Very physical action of human beings. You know, when you have a gum or when you have something to, to eat, you chew it first, right? You chew it. Jesus Christ used that verb. Unless you chew my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have life in you. Jesus Christ identified his own life, body, soul, life in this piece of bread and this cup of wine. It is so important to understand these brothers and sisters. Because every time that you go to the Eucharist, and you receive the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, it is through the flesh and the blood, the liquid, the red liquid of Jesus Christ. If you don't eat this flesh and you don't drink this blood, you don't have life. We don't have life. You know that Adam and Eve, at the beginning, they have this fruit of wisdom that God said, you don't, you don't eat the fruit of the, this tree of wisdom, otherwise you're going to die. And they ate it and they died. But there was another tree, the tree of life. And God said, let's send Adam and Eve out of the paradise so that they don't eat from the tree of life. So that they will not live forever. When Jesus Christ came and gave us his flesh and blood to eat and drink, his flesh and blood are the tree of life. And it's not only an invention, it is real. This is what Jesus Christ wants to say to us. At the beginning, you had this fruit that brings you to death. I am the fruit of life, this tree of life that is going to give you life. But you have to eat me. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. How is it possible that in the Eucharist we have really the body and the blood of Christ? This is how important is the Eucharist. This is how many fathers of the Church defended the Eucharist against any heresy. This is how many saints give their lives for the Eucharist because they really believe that Jesus Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity was present in the Eucharist. They really give their life. But there is another key, brother and sister. There is something special that you need to have in order to believe that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist. It is a virtue that comes from heaven. It is something that God the Father gives you so that you may believe in His Son present in the Eucharist. You know what is this? What is this gift? It's faith. Sometimes we think that faith, we can acquire faith by honest prayer. I will read the Bible, I will go to the sacraments, I will go to the church, and I will have faith. No. 
Faith is given by God the Father. You cannot give it by yourself. And only God the Father gives you faith and makes you realize some events in your life, some coincidences in your life. Maybe you hear the word of God. Maybe you read something. Maybe something happened to you. And this faith that is given to you by the Father tells you, God is there. God is here. God is passing through your life. If you don't have this faith, you are not gonna, you never believe that Jesus Christ is present in you. And it's something that you cannot give it to yourself. You have to receive it from God the Father. This is what St. Thomas Aquinas had to say all the time. If we don't have the, the eyes of faith, you will never see the presence of Jesus Christ in you. Faith, very important. And it's a gift. You cannot have it by yourself. So, in this time of the Corpus Christi Solemnity, I invite you, brothers and sisters, to ask for this gift of faith in order to believe and to see, really, that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist, in His body, soul, divinity, flesh and blood, everything is there. What will happen if you find Jesus Christ seated beside you. What you will do? What you will say? How you will talk to him? What you will ask him? Imagine in the Eucharist we have that grace to have Jesus Christ beside us. And this comes from faith. So in this solemnity of the Pope of Christ, brothers and sisters, Ask the Lord for this gift, really to have the gift of faith. This is the only gift that the Lord can give you, so that you may realize that Jesus Christ is present every day until the end of this age. That was his promise. I will be with you in the Eucharist until the end of this age. Good. Alright, brothers and sisters, may the Lord give you this grace to see really the presence of Jesus Christ, the presence of God in the Eucharist. I know that through this uh, live stream or podcast that we have in the Diocese of the Red Horse, you are listening to our word. But if you have the occasion on this uh, weekend to go for Mass, receive Jesus Christ in your hand, receive really the presence, the true presence, the true body and blood of Jesus Christ in your hands. So you can have him in you, so you can talk to him, so you can be with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this word that we have received. In this weekend of the Corpus Christi, we ask you that you may give us this faith, really to believe that you are present in the Eucharist, in this sacrament, in this mystery that you have left us, in this command that we have to do every Sunday for your sake. And to realize that you are always with us until the end of this age. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a good Sunday and happy Corpus Christi.